no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. When in this world the headlines read of those whose hearts are filled with greed, and rob and steal from those who need to right this wrong with blinding speed, goes underdog, 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 speed of writing more of thunder, fighting all who rob or plunder, Gentlemen, we are going to ship a billion dollars in gold bricks from our bank to the National Bank. It's the biggest shipment of gold ever made. Well, who's going to drive the armored car? We've got to have someone we can trust, absolutely. I recommend Freddy. No, Bill's better. I think Harry's the best. No, Bill. No, Fred. Harry! So it was decided that Underdog would drive the armored car. And when the great day came, there was an impressive ceremony in honor of the historic occasion. And there, friends, the last gold brick has been placed in the truck. This truck now contains a billion dollars in gold bricks. Lock the doors. Put on the chains. Now, where is our driver? There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. We trust you, Underdog. This is the largest shipment of gold ever made. You must get it to the National Bank safely. When handling gold, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go. Oops. Good luck! But little did anyone know that at that very moment, the notorious criminal Riff Raff was planning to steal the gold. Mooch, we're going to knock over the biggest. A billion bucks in gold bricks. Uh, yeah, but Underdog is driving that armored car. We can't muscle in on him. Not with muscle, pal. We're going to use brains. And by the time we're through, they're going to be calling Underdog Dopey Dog. <laughs> Here's my plan. We are going to switch trucks, see? And when under the That toll booth up ahead is new, but I'd better stop or they'll get in a stew. How much? Uh, 25. Uh, say, aren't you underdog? You're just in time. There's a phone call for you in the back room. Why, thank you, sir. I won't be long. Please watch my car while I am gone. Sure thing, pal. I'll watch it all right. It must be some mistake, you see. There was no call in there for me. So long, sucker. Rick's trick had worked perfectly. Now Underdog was driving an empty truck and fast approaching the end of his trip. And here we are, friends, with a huge crowd waiting for our hero, Underdog. And here he comes now, bringing a billion dollars in gold bricks safely to the bank. Only Underdog could have done it. Congratulations, Underdog. You've done it. Open the lock. Undo the chain. Open the doors and let us all see the gold. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no gold! No. The gold is gone! Oh. Sure, now I hate to do this underdog, but I have no choice. You're under arrest. Now what will underdog do? How will he prove that he is innocent? 
there's plenty of excitement ahead in our next episode. King Leonardo had finally reached the end of his patience. The constant plotting of Biggie Rat and Itchy Brother had taken its toll on the great king. Confound it, True Blue Odie, I'm a nervous wreck. We've got to do something about those two traitors. True, sire. We must cleanse the kingdom of treachery once and for all. But how? I tell you the trials and tribulations. Wonderful idea, sire. A trial, of course. We'll put the traitors on trial before the entire kingdom. Yes, yes, indeed. Exactly what I had in mind. Well, let's get on with it. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, look well at the two hardened faces before you. They are guilty of treason beyond a doubt. Let us review the evidence. Exhibit A shows how the traitors craftily plotted to get our great king to leave his throne. Uh, subjects are getting restless like uh, they say you've lost touch. Lost touch? They're talking revolution, Kingsley. Guillotine, deadheads, that sort of thing. This is terrible. What can I do? The cunning criminals persuaded the king to go out among his subjects and then turn the king's own guards upon him. Guards! Guards! A thief! An assassin! Shoot the mob! Only by true courage and perseverance was our king able to undo that terrible plot. And now, Exhibit B. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here, Biggie Rat disguised himself as the king's footman. Then, once his majesty and his humble servant were in the car... Confound it! Why are we stopping? Got a broken rear widget. Why not get a little air, Kingsley? Get out and stretch your legs while we digit the widget. Good idea. Come, True Blue Odie. <laughs> so long, suckers. Like a uh, bon voyage, brother. Had it not been for our king's quick thinking, we would surely have plunged hopelessly to the road so far below. But this is far from all members of the jury. I like uh, Jack. You object to what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you always say that in the funny paper, so... Uh... Shut up, Blockhead. I'll handle this. Order! Order in the court! Proceed, True Blue Odie. Our next exhibit against these two. Exhibit C. The mighty Bongo Rock. Who was it that so deliberately sabotaged the great ship and then persuaded our king to be the pilot? Listen, you mugs. Is the king a man or a mouse? A lion or a louse? If the bongo rocket is safe, then let the king fly first. The, the king, king must fly! fly. The the king king must fly. fly. And so he did, with only the kind hand of fate saving him in the doomed ship. Can't say that's all. Who saw me sabotage the ship? Uh, me, Big. Remember, I was there and, uh... Quiet, Flathead. Uh, okay, Big. I dig. Uh, big, I dig. Did you hear it, ye brother, members of the jury? A confession from the accused's own lips. And who among you can forget the king's valiant battle against the mobster monster, Terrible Tip? Everyone knows it was Biggie Rat who hired the monster. Of course, the raw courage of our brave king saw him through. No thanks to these two traitors who sit before you. Away with them! Away with the trucks! Lock and them! All right now, jury. Retire for a verdict. Have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. We find the defendants guilty and recommend that they be banished from the kingdom. Now listen, you mugs. We'll be back, see? We got a deal working, see? And when we come back, you'll all be sorry you crossed Biggie Rat. What devilish scheme does Biggie Rat have up his sleeve? Banished from the kingdom, how do he and Itchy Brother plan to wreak their vengeance? We'll find out in our next exciting episode, Battle Slip. Our American history records a truly strange phenomenon, the hula hoop. At one time, the hula hoop was amazingly popular. And then as quickly as the phenomenon began, it ended. Warehouses were left filled with hula hoops. But suddenly, those very same hula hoops were stolen. From one warehouse after another, the hula hoops vanished. Officer Flynn Flanagan immediately called on the hunter. 
Ah, uh, it's true. No one really wants the hula hoops, Hunter. But pay that no mind. Theft is theft. And we'll catch the thief or me name's not Flim Flanagan. Sounds, son. I say it sounds like the work of the fox. Sure, and that's why I'm here, Hunter. Only you can catch the wily fox. Say no more, son. He's as good as caught. I say so. And I am the hunter. <laughs> Always a man of action, the hunter was quickly on the job. Uh-huh. So it's the crafty fox, is it? That little boy disguised is no use, son. I'd know the fox anywhere. Drop the hoop and come with me. Take your hands off my child, you beast. Hold on. I say stop. I'm the hunter. Have nose. We'll hunt. Ouch. Please, man. Please. Please. Bruised though he now was, the fearless hunter refused to give up. His nose was constantly on the job, searching for the hula hoops. In a few moments, the hunter had his first clue. Hawaii was just wonderful, darling. I simply love the hula dancers. Mm-hmm. Hula dancers, eh? Well, I say where there's hula dancers, there must be hula hoops. With incredible speed, the hunter immediately made his way to the soil of beautiful Hawaii. All right, ma'am, stop the hula and hand over the hoops. No use trying to wiggle out of this. Where are you hiding those hoops? Take your hands off me. Ah! All right, wise guy, take this. Back on board ship, the hunter slept soundly through his return trip to New York. Once there, the hunter's sensitive nose was immediately back on the trail. Have nose, will hunt. Reads the card of the mighty hunter. He's bold, he's blunt, he's... Mm -hmm. Dingling Brothers Circus. Well, sounds like real excitement inside. My sensitive nose tells me I'd better investigate. Inside, the hunter was stunned by what he saw. With thousands of people looking on, a man inside a large cage was making a group of tigers jump through hoops. Hoops, aha, the missing hula hoops. My nose never fails. Stand back, everyone. I am the hunter. Now, all right, you tigers, hand over those cotton blooming hoops. Now, now, now hold on here. I say, don't wait. Wait, wait. The door. The door. Open the door. This hula hoop case has really got me spinning. Looks hopeless. Hopeless, I say. My, my friend, you do look unhappy. Step right up here and get yourself some fun-filled entertainment. Might even win a giant prize with my great new life-size ring toss game. Well, now, son, I have been working awful hard. Yeah, a little relaxing fun might be good for me. Here you are, friend. Four hoops for one dollar. Just toss the hoops over those blocks and... Wait, hey... Hey, hold it! You've got my neck! Hey. Ah! ah, Hunter, you never fail us. The fox and the hula hoops. Now, what little thing is it we might give you? Well, now, one of those hoops would be nice, son. I always wanted to give one a try. Officer, who is that man doing the funny dance? That, me lady, is the hunter. <laughs> My goodness, Klondike, where are you going with all those pies? <laughs> These pies are baked, Major Miner. <laughs> I'm going to use them to bring in savoir faire. <laughs> yeah, yes, how clever. Quite so. Good show. I hope you catch him, Klondike. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> Just wait and let savoir faire come along. I'll teach him to try it out with Klondike Cat. <laughs> Savoir Faire will never know this hole is here. <laughs> and when he walks up to get that pie, swoosh, splash, one muddy mouse. <laughs> that is a lovely job, Klondike. And this is a lovely pie. <laughs> Where'd you come from, Savoir Faire? How'd you get over there? Savoir Faire is everywhere. Put that pie down. It is delicious, Klondike. Kill you, you miserable mouse! Help! Goodbye, Klondike cat. Thank you for 
Ramsey Pie. No, put him in chains. Oh, hang him by his heels. Oh, make mincemeat out of that mouth. This time we won't have to worry about savoir faire falling. It's what's going to fall on him that counts. When this rock goes down, savoir faire is going to be one flat rock. Now, I just hook this onto the rope here, and when savoir faire picks up that pie, blammo, savoir faire is nowhere. <laughs> A message for you, Klondike Cat. An important message from Major Minor. Oh, why, well, thank you, little fella. You're about the smallest Klondike cop I ever saw. Uh, what does it say? It's a lucky thing you got here in time. This note says I should check this pie because there may be something valuable hidden inside. Well, let me see now. The rock! Goodbye, Monsieur Klondike, and thank you for the pie. What a plan. <laughs> this time I got that mouse for sure. I put a pie up here. Sam Waffam picks it up, then releases the trap door. He falls into the rocket. I pull the lever and... <laughs> Savoir Fair spins round and around and takes off through the air to land right in the fort jail. My nose, she never fails. Another beautiful pie. Now I've got you, Savoir Fair, and you're going to jail. When I pull this lever, you're going to get the surprise of your life. Yeah! Stop! My coat's caught! You did it, Klondike. Your aim was perfect. Klondike cat. He always gets his mouth. In our last episode, Underdog was arrested for stealing a truckload of gold bricks worth a billion dollars. You can't arrest him. That's Underdog. He is a true hero. Hero Schmiro. All I know is that the truck was locked and chained. The only person who could have gotten the gold out was the driver. And Underdog was the driver. Take him away. And soon the news was all over town. X-ray, X-ray, read all about it. Underdog in jail for stealing gold. X-ray, X-ray. Meanwhile, at the television station, O.J. Squeeze was talking to his top reporter. Holly, this is the biggest news in years. Get out there on camera and tell the world. I can't. I won't say that about Underdog. He couldn't have done it. He just couldn't. This is news. It's your job to tell people. I won't. You will. Won't. Will. Won't. Will. Please, Mr. Squeeze, just give me 24 hours. I must help Underdog clear his good name. I must find the real crooks. Meanwhile, where were the real crooks? Hey! A billion dollars in gold. What a haul. Uh, yeah, but how are we going to get rid of all those gold bricks? Uh, we are going to paint them red and take them over the border like they were real bricks. Uh, yeah, but uh, where are we going to paint them? We got to have a place where nobody will bother us. I got it already. It's a haunted house. Haunted? Oh, no, no, not me. I'm not going to any haunted house. Oh, yes, you are. Now shut up. Meanwhile, unknown to the two crooks, Sweet Polly had hired a helicopter and was now in the air looking for the missing armored car. Uh, hey, Riff, I think we're being followed by a helicopter. Take a look through the glasses. 
It's that television reporter. Sweet Polly? Yeah. Well, see if you can give her a slip. Still there? Still there. Still there? Still there. All right, I've had enough of this. Give me that chopper. <laughs> That'll take care of her. Let's get out of here. And Sweet Polly was in trouble. She bailed out of the damaged helicopter and drifted toward Earth, landing gently. She got down from the tree and headed for the nearest town. Excuse me, sir, but have you seen an armored car go by here? Yep. Oh, thank goodness. Which way? That way. Did it stop around here? Yep. Stopped at the house at the end of the road. Fine. I'll go there. I wouldn't if I was you. Haunts. Haunts? Haunts. Spooks. Ghosts. It's a haunted house. Don't be silly. There's no such thing as ghosts. I'm going up there. Suit yourself, but don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, it is a little scary. I wish Underdog were here. Where was Underdog? Unfortunately, he was in court. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Underdog, guilty. You have disgraced all the heroes in the world. I hereby sentence you to 30 years. I obey the laws in all the books, but if I'm in jail, I can't catch crooks. Now what will Underdog do? How can he prove his innocence? There are important developments in our next exciting episode. Oh.